Hello, everyone. My name is Hector Almienta. I'm a composer and librettist, and I'm here with some wonderful singers today to talk about Opera Modesto's upcoming production of Bless Me Ultima, which is one of my own works. It was commissioned by Opera Southwest and Opera Cultura premiered in 2018. So let me introduce them to you. One is Sevel Governor, as well as Sandra Bengochea. And even for me, that was tricky to say, but I love the last name. <laughs> Okay, so welcome, welcome. So uh, Sibel um, and I have worked, I, she was actually uh, in one of my previous works called La Llorona, which was, which was produced at Western Stage Theater in Salinas, so I know her. Sandra, I've heard amazing things about, we're colleagues and local colleagues in San Jose. Um, so welcome, welcome. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Yeah, and um, I think I mentioned this, but Sibel's playing Ultima, um, in uh, Bless Me Ultima, and Sandra is playing Maria. So we're going to talk to them basically uh, about their roles um, in the work. So, Sibel, uh, Sibel, why don't you start first? Sure. I'm very excited to be playing Bless Me Ultima. It's or Ultima rather. It's it's uh it's been such a emotional experience actually uh, learning this role. I, as I got towards the end, you know. Um, I don't know if I'm revealing something. Everyone should no, come and see it quiet. anyway. But yeah, I won't know what happens. <laughs> I won't tell you what happens. But um, the little boy Tony asks for a blessing from Ultima, and I too grew up um, giving, asking for blessings from my nana, my grandmother on my Venezuelan side, and um, these are people who are no longer with me, um, you know, in, in this world. And I and I felt so emotional. I don't have people asking me for, for the blessing. It's very much of a sort of respect for your elders. And so there's been something about playing this role, learning this role that, this, that just has been very emotional to for me and um, helped me connect to my uh, Latina roots. That's wonderful, that's wonderful. And we'll talk a little bit more about the role. Um, Sandra, tell us about um, you and Maria. Who's Maria in the opera? Uh, she plays Tony's mother. Uh, and she's very, she's deeply religious, but is also very intuitive and spiritual. And I just love, um, you know, one of my favorite musical sections of the, the show of the opera is the duet that I share with Ultima. And you have this beautiful dynamic uh, between the spiritual, the religious spirituality of the mother and then the spirituality of Ultima. And it's these beautiful merging of just faith, this, these sort of faith, these faiths coming together musically. They, it just really touched me. Um, it reminded me, you know, just it reminds me a lot of, because my mother was extremely religious. Um, she mm. had little altars in our house everywhere. Um, I'd always tell her, Ay, ¿por qué tantas virgenes? <laughs> Hay muchas, like there's so many. Um, and she would, you know, she, she should always go there to just sort of find her um, grounding um, and pray. And I just, I just really, it's just, I find it so touching and emotional. And I guess, as Sibel mentions, personal, uh, this, this dynamic between the two, these two faiths. Yeah, and it really, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Sibel, what were you going to oh, say? Oh, I was just going to say, I love that duet too, and I really feel like it's, um, you know, Maria is praying to the heavens, and Ultima is sort of praying, uh, has like a connection to the earth, the sacred yes. earth, and the, you know, so I love that sort of duality, yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, that, you know, we can maybe talk offline um, about that, but it really was to show how these, these forces, you know, the spiritual, religious forces, as well as the natural, um, and I don't really like to say supernatural, but the unseen forces mm -hmm. of nature. Uh, but these two women, you know, Ultima, who comes into the life of this young boy, Tony, as a mentor, how um, she and, and Maria, who's the mother, uh, their, their goal is the same, is to pre protect the child, um, mm -hmm. drawing on different energies, I could say, mm -hmm. and to show their, the love between uh, you know, for this young boy and what they share in common. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. so it's wonderful. Thank you for, for sharing that with uh, everyone here. Um, so how are, you, how are you approaching the music? 
Sandra, do you have thoughts on that? <laughs> How am I approaching? Well, I mean, you're like, studying the music, right? Obviously, right? Yeah, absolutely. Own, absolutely. Guess, let, me, let, me, let me put it another way. It's a little easier to answer. Um, you know, based on your own experience and your training, right? And there's these, these musical influences, which are, you know, it's, you know, it's, you know, it's neo-romantic, right? Um, but there are these, these Southwest sort of New Mexican musical idioms. How are you approaching um, giving that authenticity in the way that you are, you, you hear it and you're practicing it and study, studying it? Uh, well, vocally, well, I, I do have to say this, that when I, I'm glad I'm singing it now and not when I was younger. Uh, cause it is, uh, it's quite a, it's a, it's a really full lyric role and it's Puccini esque in, in how I'm having to, to sing it. It's, it's actually right. It's like almost like lyrico spinto. If I were to like touch on the operatic sort of side of it. Um, so, so. So yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, it, 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 it's, I mean, it's beautiful. I mean, there are sections of it, you know, just like when I sing, like if I were to sing like Puccini, where I'm right. like, I get a little nervous because I want to sing it well. I want to sing it right. I want like, the, there's a lot of beautiful, long, expansive, long phrases in the music vocally. And it's, uh, it's for lack of a better phrase, it's easy to blow your wad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, I love, uh, you know, my favorite is to write for the female voice. And I often study Puccini. You know, he's, he and Verdi are uh, Britain too, the way he sets text. Britain was amazing. Um, but I appreciate you including Puccini. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll put that on my resume. Uh, Savelle, how about you? I really found that I've needed to connect with her personality through learning the music because they're so, the score is so atmospheric for me and there, there's so much use of silence and sort of independence of the, the vocal line. Um, and so it's really felt for me like I need to know what's happening in between my vocal sections to understand how to connect with this score and how to connect with her vocally. And I agree with Sandra, I'm very glad to be singing her at this point um, because I think she just takes this sort of, um, this earthy experience and trust, you know, mm -hmm. in, in herself. It's like she knows something that the rest of the world doesn't know. And it's not a boastful thing. It's just this like solidity in, in who she is. And I yeah. think how, she, how you've written her, her vocally. Yeah, yeah. I think your part, um, in, in my goal with in writing the music for Ultima was really to capture the Llano and the river, um, you know, the openness um, in terms of, you know, I don't want to get too technical, but the, 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 the kinds of chords that I'm using, but it's still, you know, I always, you know, I really consider myself as a melodic composer. Uh, I try to write, you know, nice melodies people will enjoy, um, but just the background, you know, the, the orchestration, uh, both the original orchestration as well as for this, um, I try to, you know, try to do that. But I mean, I'm interested to see, this will be, you know, unique in that, you know, it's written for a full orchestra. And this is a, a smaller ensemble. Mm -hmm. I, I think it, I think it really works. I, you know, we'll find out <laughs> in January um, because you are, you know, really premiering uh, to some extent a new work. You know, it's, it's a, mm -hmm. a condensed version, um, but it is, it's, it is slightly different. So it'll be interesting you know, um, it'll be really a joy to, to sing it. Um, what else would you like to say in terms of, um, you say you, you connect to the, you were, you know, you're connecting to the characters and, um, and you know, one of the questions that I've been asked um, and Opera Modesto asked me is, you know, is this a work specifically for, you know, the Latino Latinx community or is this for a broader community? What are sort of the, the themes um, that you think audience members might connect with? Gosh, I think it's about respect for your elders and respect for the earth and respect for your history. Um, it feels like a, a piece that's very much about the past, just as it is about the future. You know, that there's, that we're, we're not disconnected from where we come from and where we're going. Um, and, and I think also, you know, Ultima goes to Maria's family um, and they open their doors to her because the world has changed and where she is 
has become isolated and, you know, she needs. And so I, I think it's kind of timeless. These are all uh, themes that, that are not just obviously connected to being Latino. Mm -hmm. How about you, Sandra? What do you thought? I have nothing more to say. That's beautiful. That's beautifully said. It's about connection. Yeah. Deep um, connection. Yeah. And I'll just, I'll share with you, you know, um, that except for the character Ultima, all the, all the characters are based on Mr. Anaya's life growing up. Mm -hmm. um, the Yano, the house, um, the, 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 the um, now I forget, um, the, the Luna, the Luna land, the, you know, all of that, the, the harvesting, all of that is very true. And when I were, was working with him, um, you know, I consulted with him on the libretto and I would visit, I visited him about three or four times and he would paint for me, you know, what it was like growing up as a child. Um, and that there were this, this, you know, the father was connected to the land, the vaquero, to the open spaces and, and how that all changed, you know, with, uh, you know, you know, as time went on and then how the mother was deeply religious um, and the young boy was trying to find his place in the world. Um, so, well, I want to thank you both very much for this. This is really exciting. I'm excited to drop from Modesto is bringing this back to the stage in this new sort of uh, iteration, this new version. And it'll be great to have you both sing. And uh, for everyone here, um, you know, these are incredibly talented singers. Uh, and I'm just, I'm excited to be able to hear them. And I'm sure you will be too. So I will see you on January 8th and January 9th. Oh, those are the right dates, correct? Yes. yes. And in opera for opera Modesto's production of Bless Me Ultima. So thank you.